Hello, I'm Chloe Singer-Johnston from Minds and Money, and today we're joined by Dev Randhoa. Dev is the CEO for F3 Uranium. Thank you so much for being with us today, Dev. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem. Firstly, can you tell us a little bit about F3 Uranium? Some of the non-Canadians listening to this won't know what a project generator is. Do you elaborate? Sure. Well, it just kind of sound what it is. We... uh, you know, to me, it's the most exciting part of the mining industry is the discovery process and going to areas people have gone before, but you rethink what's there geologically and, um, you know, do and then go drill somewhere and make a discovery that nobody has. You're creating something. So I think that's the funnest part of, the, of our, in my opinion, the whole cycle. Uh, some people like developing a mine and putting it in production. I get that. For us, it's more about um, taking looking at land, looking at the data, and we're looking at it. So we are based in Canada. We're exploring for uranium. Um, and maybe for the first time in history, we got a perfect storm where we all know we need a lot more energy. And maybe in a wake-up call has come that renewables aren't maybe um, the answer that people were hoping for. Uh, they might happen in time. But, you know, it's certainly been painful for countries like Germany which are now over 50% of the energy comes from coal because they're so ill-equipped for the needs of their nation. And, you know, they are, they're knocking down wind farms now to, to take the coal out from underneath in the ground. So it's woke up that we need more energy, but we need clean energy. And so this transition time, you know, we need lithium, we need uranium. So these transition metals are certainly getting a lot of attention. And number one is energy. Where are we going to get it? Well, we need uranium. For nuclear power it remains to be the only you know carbon free footprint we can leave behind when we uh extract energy so so it's we're looking for uranium but we're very focused we're focused in canada where the highest grades in the world um it's 10 20 times world average so um you know um you better take a, a shovel of uh, dirt out of the ground and get paid 10 times for that versus the same amount of work, that's what grade means. So what we look for is, um, well, project generator, we're looking for projects that uh, require from the government typically, um, where we then rethink it, um, put, a, put a hold down, hope to find. And fortunately for us, we have now made three discoveries as a team, uh, which is unheard of in, in the space. Most people would recognize this JR zone we found to be the best um, discovery in, in the last several years. And because of the high grade, and again, it's in a good jurisdiction, as people have learned recently in Dining and Niger, you know, political stability does matter. So we're a project generator based in Canada. Thank you. And can you tell us about the geology of the Athabasca Basin for uranium and the latest drilling results? Sure. Well, it's a very unique place in the world, very unique. Um, I'll I'll plagiarize uh, uh, our late friend, uh, Lucas Lundy. He would say, think of this sandstone like a milkshake sitting on a hard rock. And where the two meet, they call that the unconformity. Now, until about uh, literally until I'd say 10 years ago, people had not looked at the west side of the basin for some time because they felt they had to, you had to have Uranium had to be in the east side of the basin, also had to be at the unconformity, not in the basement so much. So um, FCU's uh, discovery, the Triple R, uh, which we were part of, the founding group, um, that's in the basement, um, certainly uh, the, the arrow. So it's in the basement, and our discovery now is also in the basement. Our is called a JR. So it's a very unique part of the world where, you know, uh, the grades are so high and um, it's very deep. It's very expensive to drill. So you want to be very careful to do a lot of prep work before you drill, you know, ground geophysics, we fly it. We do lots, we take a lots of steps along the way before we drill because it's quite expensive. <laughs> I understand. And what recent news would you like to highlight to investors? Can you talk about the recent private placements that you've done? Yes. Well, I guess uh, first making discovery was fantastic. Uh, but recently, we just had a $15 million investment from Denison Mines. Uh, Denison Mine is a world leader. 
uh, in the Athabasca. Uh, it's a multi-billion dollar company listed in New York. And they've just taken a small investment in us. So it's a third party verification from the industry, which is very important to us. And also, you know, um, it, it's uh, not just the company and the assets, but the people. They have some great people over there, um, you know, really in the spirit of our friend Lucas Lundin, David Case is doing a fantastic job with ethics um, and trying to build, uh, you know, finding solutions for tomorrow's needs is what really, you know, what we need. We need green solutions that are economic. Absolutely. And uh, what opportunities do you foresee for the next 12 months and how is your company positioned to take advantage of them? Well, number one, you have to have good people. You have to have money, a lot of it. And they have their projects to put it into. Well, we have, after this closing with the Denison Project, we'll have over $50 million in the bank, which is a lot of money for a junior. Um, we certainly have the people, um, not to boast, but I guess I can, of our team. You know, most people uh, never find one discovery, let alone two. No one's found two before. Nobody. Well, you know, we are now on number three. That's unheard of. So I think our track record, we got 50 million in the bank and then we've got this now amazing project. Um, we found this big pot of uranium. We're looking for more pots, um, but we also found another system um, along the way that we found some phenomenal alteration on. And um, you have to have alteration, you have to have bleaching and all these kinds of things before you, somewhere in there, what the uranium came through there, where is sitting, we don't know yet. But we know it's come through there. So you've got a great world-class project, uh, lots of money, and great people know how to use it wisely. Can you tell us a bit more about your management team? Sure. Um, well, I'm the, the founding um, of, of the group, along with Ray Ashley and the other key individual would be Sam Hartman and Jamie Bannerman. Um, you have to have a balance, a good business decision making, but also very strong technical. And both Sam and Ray, Ray is our president. Sam is our head of a head VP of exploration. And because uranium is quite deep and you can't see it for 300, 600 meters down, you need a good geophysics team. And we have that. So I would say those are the, our key four people. And, well, and a great board. Sorry, and a great board. And, uh, I want to talk about this quickly that we've got two other board members are very strong, technically, Terence Ozier, uh, John DeJoya. And recently, we've had a wonderful um, addition with Lori Thomas, who's got lots of experience. Ms. Thomas has in the Athabasca working with Chemical. A really great team. Um, so lastly, there are lots of exciting uranium projects out there. What sets your mining company apart from others in this space? A uh, great um, simple, simply great. There are projects out there with 0.3%, 0.4%. You know, we put out 18 meters of 8%. So it's just, it's a pure um, grade and the size of it's already, you know, we've been at it for less than a year. We know we've got a pretty good blob of uranium. You know, the key for us now is to find another blob of uranium on either on our structure now, uh, the one A1, or we call the other one A1B. They're very close to each other. So on one of those systems, we need to find more. Um, and that's what makes, I think, it exciting to be an exploration play that's really got something and you might get more. Our stock will rise with the price of uranium, which I think it will. It simply has to. Um, all the, it's a perfect storm for nuclear power today. Um, it'll rise, but also it could grow on its own simply through a discovery. And so it's got a duality as a year investment if you want to take it into the ex uranium exploration game, we offer that duality that it's in uranium, but it also lots of upside still. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Dev. It's been great to hear all of your news and updates. Well, thanks for having me. No problem. If you'd like to find out more, please head to f3uranium.com. This interview is brought to you by Minds and Money. Thank you everyone for watching and goodbye. Resourcing tomorrow. Accelerating the energy transition. 100 plus countries represented. And together with government representatives, mining and energy professionals, ESG experts, financial and professional services, industry associations, investors and consultants, Resourcing Tomorrow will address critical mineral supply, 
the energy transition. Environmental resilience, the circular economy, ESG, our future workforce, AI automation and machine learning, digitalization, mineral processing and plant optimization, exploration and development projects. Have your say in the future of our industry. Join us for Resourcing Tomorrow from 28 to 30 November 2023. Register today.